The sound of those tornado sirens is something that community members in Kakana did not hear on Tuesday night, despite a now confirmed tornado passing through part of that community. An EF1 tornado traveled more than a mile through Kakana on Tuesday night, and we continue to receive questions from viewers about why exactly those sirens didn't sound. Fox 11's Marla Lundak spoke to those in charge of sending out warnings and triggering sirens, and she brings us a closer look tonight. In a matter of minutes, a tornado caused extensive damage in parts of Kakana Tuesday night. But it begs the question, why didn't Kakana's tornado sirens and NOAA weather radios go off? Kakana's emergency manager, the man in charge of triggering the sirens there, addressed our question this week. Unfortunately, in this particular case, the weather service did not have the city of Kakana under a tornado warning. Um, and that's the simple answer to the question is we weren't under a warning, therefore the sirens don't sound. Why wasn't there a tornado warning specifically issued in the area of Kakana where we now know that there was an EF1 tornado? Sure, so, so for this event, just the way it unfolded is it was a big line of storms with lots of like the potential for embedded very quick spin up tornadoes within the system. Um, so these are basically the hardest for us to forecast because they're fast moving as well. Kurt Kotenberg with the National Weather Service in Green Bay explains that unlike tornadoes that recently ravaged the Midwest, the tornadoes we saw this week weren't always clearly identifiable on radar. He says NWS issued a severe thunderstorm warning with potential for 70 mile per hour winds at 8.47 p.m. Tuesday. Just minutes later, at 8.52, it was upgraded to tornado possible. It's just given the nature of the system, we could see like the potential for maybe a circulation here. Um, but again, this is such a fast moving system is moving at 60 miles an hour to the northeast. So everything is just happening so quickly with these. Um, you know, by the time you get a tornado warning issued, the storm could have lifted. That's what Fox 11 chief meteorologist Patrick Powell says too. Dealing with these big lines of thunderstorms with little rotations inside that line all over the place. So you put out a large severe thunderstorm warning with the considerable tag with the caveat that there could be tornadoes that pop up in that line. It's just there the tornadoes in those situations are very quick, very hard to notice and and they're gone before you can even issue a warning in most cases. Repeatedly on social media, NWS warned of the possibility of tornadoes, but local municipalities like Kakana ultimately make the decision on when to sound the sirens. Kakana, like just a couple city blocks and then it lifted. So just very, very quick, very brief. And this one just fell in unfortunately a populated area. And then like you said, by the time you even recognize that there was one of those spin ups and you're getting ready to send out a warning, it's already over. Pretty much in this environment, yes. Even without tornado warnings or sirens, officials in Kakana say communication from area forecasters helped the community prepare as best they could. That is why we see, you know, no injuries uh, in this event because a lot of people did heed those warnings. In Green Bay, Marlo Lundak, Fox 11 News. Can you start by giving me a little bit of a recap of what our area saw on Tuesday night? Sure. So um, basically most of the entire state of Wisconsin was impacted by this storm. Um, in our area here in central and northeastern Wisconsin, it was a line of storms that started at about 7 o'clock or so in Marathon County. Uh, produced what we have confirmed is two tornadoes so far. Um, I think we're in the process of confirming a third tornado right now. But then we had uh, widespread damage across all of central Wisconsin, anywhere from like trees down to power lines down. So lots of power outages across this whole area. And the storms went all the way through Door County and up to the UP of Michigan. So there were severe thunderstorm warnings, watches warnings, and tornado warnings issued across the area. But why wasn't there a tornado warning specifically issued in the area of Kakana where we now know that there was an EF1 tornado? Sure, so, so for this event, just the way it unfolded is it was a big line of storms with lots of like the potential for embedded very quick spin up tornadoes within the system. Um, so these are basically the hardest for us to forecast because they're fast moving as well. 
And so these are like, it's like the opposite of like the tornadoes, the big tornadoes that go through like Oklahoma, like you can see those on the radar, that those are isolated supercells. But this was just a big line of storm. So lots of quick little spin ups that maybe last like a minute or two uh, would be possible with these. Now at the particular one in Outagamie County, we had a severe thunderstorm warning issued at 8.47 p.m. And I think the storms hit the Kaukana area between 9 o'clock and 9.02 p.m. And in the thunderstorm warning, we had a 70 mile per hour wind tag in that. And so that's what we consider um, what could be a, a considerable damage, 70 miles per hour. So an EF0 tornado has wind speeds of 65 miles an hour to 85 miles per hour. So effectively the warning that we had, had wind speeds of an EF0 tornado in it. Um, and then at 8.52 p.m. we upgraded to a tornado possible because just given the nature of the system, we could see like the potential for maybe a circulation here. Um, but again, this is such a fast moving system is moving at 60 miles an hour to the northeast. So everything is just happening so quickly with these. Um, you know, by the time you get a tornado warning issued, the storm could have lifted. So we had the tornado possible in there. We had the 70 mile an hour winds in there. And this was just a very unfortunate situation for one of those quick little spin ups just happened to unfortunately hit a populated area uh, in Kaukana. So can you kind of explain um, how long it traveled, how big it was, kind of explain what that tornado looked mm. like in Kaukana? Yeah, so from what we've seen on the ground, like it really, the tornado itself really wasn't on the ground very far, um, maybe just a mile or two and maybe just for a couple minutes, like right near the river there um, up towards Holy Cross Cemetery. That's where I think a lot of the tornadic damage kind of came to an end. So, you know, a couple blocks. So just, again, a very uh, quick spin up, very small area, but unfortunately it was over a populated location. So, um, you know, again, that, that's where we had the sphere thunderstorm warning, tornado possible tag. And then also, too, it started in advance. Uh, we had tornado watch out for the entire area that was issued earlier in the evening. So that's what we tell people, too, especially this time of year, when we issue a sphere thunderstorm watch or a tornado watch, that means to start being prepared. So. Uh, learn when the storms might start to impact your area and start thinking of your safety plan. So if we do issue a tornado warning or a severe thunderstorm warning, you already know where to seek shelter, how to receive that information, and ultimately how to keep yourself and your family safe. So essentially all the information that was out that night leading up to the storm, maybe not in those exact minutes, but obviously everything should have been an indication to community members to be prepared for potential tornadoes, 70 plus mile an hour winds, correct? Um, yeah, and what I say too, like the best thing you can do to keep yourself and your family safe is to make a habit when you wake up in the morning, take 30 to 60 seconds and just look at the weather forecast or watch it on TV so that you know, you know, like, you know, if it's sunny in 72, then great, go outside and have a great evening. Um, but if there's thunderstorms, if there's tornadoes forecast later that evening, think of like where you'll be at that time. So if they're forecast at nine o'clock, think, okay, I'll be at home at nine o'clock. Make sure you have a way to receive the warnings and then make sure you have a place to seek shelter. So all of the, those preparedness steps, you can actually start doing in the morning, just being aware of the weather forecast for the day. And, and this time of year too, so like we're, we're in uh, late May, the peak severe weather season here in Northeastern Wisconsin is usually like July 4th through the middle of August. So we aren't even close to the peak severe weather season. So unfortunately, I think we have a couple more weeks and months ahead here where severe weather might ramp up and get worse before it gets better. So if you haven't taken time yet to think about your safety and preparedness plan, I would definitely do that right now before more storms come. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I don't think this is the case, but is there ever, are there ever situations where you guys are in communication with local municipalities mm -hmm. and telling them maybe, hey, whoever is in charge of setting off the outdoor tornado <coughs> sirens, which we know also mm -hmm. triggers the weather radios. Is that ever conversations that you guys are having with local municipalities? Because mm -hmm. obviously what we're seeing now is the tornado sirens in Kakana didn't go off. So a lot of people are wondering, well, why wasn't there a tornado warning issue? Right. So do you ever have those conversations with local um, communities? So, so mainly here at the weather service, we mainly just stick to the weather portion of it. Um, and then each community, each municipality, each county can set its own policy and procedures for when they activate sirens and when they don't activate sirens. Um, I know, for instance, our severe thunderstorm warnings, we categorize it. So for this one here, we had the 70 mile per hour wind tag in it. And so a community could decide like, okay, if the weather service says 70 miles an hour, we'll trigger the warnings. 
we also issue like 80 mile per hour warnings. So the community might say, hey, that might be the threshold where we want to send off the sirens. So it really just boils down to the local municipality. And we leave that to the local jurisdictions to decide because they know how to best serve their community. They're out in their community every day. Um, that we could just provide the weather insight, provide you know the damage and the impacts at each wind speed that uh, or tornado that um, might occur. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what am I missing? Is there? Oh, we wanted to ask a little bit about. It looks like in the NWS the lacrosse location, they could be <coughs> confirming a couple more tornadoes out there. Do you have any knowledge on that? Do we know if anything else will be confirmed <coughs> from this recent storms? Um, yeah. So right now. Um, I'm in contact with the Marathon County Emergency Manager, and we might have seen another little circulation um, just southwest of Edgar. So this would be separate from the one that we already confirmed that was kind of northwest of Edgar. Um, we're looking into that this morning, and um, that might be another one. Then also on Washington Island, um, there was definitely damage on the island, um, and we're just trying to figure out if it was straight line winds or if it was caused by a tornado. And so that's the other problem with this event. Um, you, lots of winds, wind damage pretty much everywhere. Um, so deciphering if it was from a circulation that was a really quick spinning or if it was straight line winds. And what we tell people also, um, you know, like a tornado might have 80 mile per hour winds. Straight line winds are also 80 mile per hour winds. And so 80 miles an hour is 80 miles an hour, whether or not it occurs in straight line winds or a tornado. So look at those severe thunderstorm warnings and take the threat, you know, just as you would if it was a tornado. Because again, a severe thunderstorm warning with 70 mile per hour winds in it is the exact same as an EF0 tornado. So take the exact same safety steps that you would take. So stay away from windows, try to get to the lowest, most interior room as possible. Mm -hmm. What am I missing? Is there anything about this recent event that you think community members should know? Anything we've left out? Um, yeah, just, uh, just again, so so last year was about the third least active year that we've had in our lifetimes here in northeastern east central wisconsin so we had you know it's pretty big lull last year now we're still in the month of may the peak severe weather doesn't start until july 4th and runs into most of august so we have a long severe weather season ahead of us lots of lots more warnings tornado warnings fear thunderstorm warnings definitely possible this season so uh, again, make sure you have that safety and preparedness plan ready to go right now and use this as kind of like a wake up that, you know, hey, severe weather season's here. And also, too, um, with La Nina kind of shifting in towards late summer, early fall, uh, the impact of that here in Wisconsin, um, a little bit of a tendency to be perhaps warmer and maybe a little bit of a wetter fall. So we could maybe see... Um, severe weather and tornadoes possibly into October, you know, more so than we would usually see in Wisconsin. So maybe a little bit of a longer thunderstorm season here would be favored with La Nina for northeastern Wisconsin. Yeah, wow, good information. So this is kind of like, this is how we categorize each warning. So like the printouts of these will go to like Pete Petaniak or Phil or whoever's in, in the office. Mm -hmm. And so like the 70 considerable could also, like either one of those we consider considerable. And destructive is 80 miles an hour baseball sized hail. And those will trigger the wireless emergency alert. So your cell phone should ping. Wow. And you sent those out the other night? Or what time did you ask? Yep, we sent out the, the considerable um, the 70 mile an hour wind gust with the warning that was issued at 8.47 p.m. And then, yeah, walk us through some of these social media posts that you guys had out that night. Yep. So this was a severe thunderstorm warning. And this is bigger than we usually issue for a warning, but the line of storms was so big, like, that that's what it was. <laughs> we're, not, we're not used to that up here as often, but it happened. And so uh, we had the storm will contain wind gusts of 70 miles per hour. And, again, that's, that's an EF0 tornado. So uh, that was pretty intense. And, yeah. And then there was there was that other one. Oh yeah, that Somewhere other there. social media post. This one. Yes. Because this one. So walk us through what yep. you were, why you put this one out. So this this we uh, made manually. So we made this one at 8:36 p.m. So about a half hour before the storms hit the uh, Appleton Kakana area. Um, so this is the line of storms that we were seeing. So again, it went all the way up here to towards Ryan Lander. 
Um, and then each one of these was like a wind damage report that we had already received um, from the storm. So you can kind of see it was leaving a, a wake of damage in its path there. And then we had the arrows you know, saying that it's moving directly towards the metro. And then lots of circulations here, making the spin-up tornadoes very possible. And again, like we saw, unfortunately, in Kakana, like just a couple city blocks, and then it lifted. So just very, very quick, very brief. And this one just fell in, unfortunately, a populated area. And then, like you said, by the time you even recognize that there was one of those spin-ups, and you're getting ready to send out a warning, it's already over. Pretty much in this environment, yes. 